Before we resume uh, go on with our Bible study, there's a question, uh, there's a suggestion. The ladies want uh, an exchange gift. So, uh, do the men will the, do the men agree with that? Would you, uh, we, we, we will exchange it. We have no choice. We have no, we have no choice. <laughs> See, they're already taking it. So, uh, how much is the, how much is the, should the gift be? 20, okay. So the budget is 20. 20. But if, if, if 20, 20, 20 and above. Uh, so it's 20 and above. The minimum is 20. Okay. All right. So we resume with that. Let's uh, go to our Bible study. And it's uh, sort of a recap of what we heard this morning. So... Once again, these are the points that we heard this morning. Let it go. So, first of all, what we cling to is usually what God asks you to release to Him. Uh, has anyone ever experienced that, uh, that thing? When, has ev uh, anyone ever experienced that God has told you to release something to, to Him? Yes. Anyone? Anyone yes. wants to share yes. an experience like that? Ah, yes, I would like yes. to share my experience. Well, anyway, uh, you heard that already. Narinig natin pasto po. Tagalogin ko na. But uh, someone should translate for for Sandy and. Ah, okay. English in the. English in the. Yes. I got this experience uh, about the about the about the preaching of Pastor Mo this morning. But that was already, I think it's already a, a, a few weeks from now, or it's, I think it's already a month or a month. Mm -hmm. month. Uh, we, are, we are planning, this one, we are planning some some business or some uh, early retirement, and then it was keep on injecting and injecting and injecting my head. And every night before I read my Bible, I make it a habit already, which is really a very bad habit because before I, I start to open the Bible, I have to take my iPhone and then I have to start counting. Calculating. Calculating and counting and then uh, and then I, I, I said, oh, if we will take an early retirement, we have received this and we have received this one. And uh, and uh, I was start to, to think if it is, uh, if we fit to our, to our uh, business that we're 
were planning to do or and uh, sometimes I was just thinking why why some other people has a lot of, lots of money and it was already injecting my head because there are some that they don't even have a job and they don't have even a roof to sleep and they don't even have something to eat and it starts to and every night I was thinking about it before I read the Bible and once one time I was so tired already of thinking about it and then uh, I start to cry because I know Lord I already tired of thinking about all these things mm -hmm. and I don't want to think it anymore I will give it into your hands and then I pray and then I said please guide me when I read my Bible show me and when I open the Bible I was thinking about the poor and the rich Mm. And then, when I opened the Bible, it was Psalm 49. Just write it on your notebook, Psalm 49, 49. and then read it by yourself. And after that, I start, I start to cry. I said, yes, because there is something here in the Bible. I said, uh, I think there, in, it, in Psalm 49, I would like to share it to you. Because it says here, in Psalm 49, verse 16 and 17, it says there, Do not be afraid when one becomes rich, when the glory of his house is increased. For when he dies, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. And after that, uh, from that moment, every time I, I, I think about those who are more, well, we are fortunate compared to them. And then I start thinking about all those business, and I said, no, Lord, I don't want to think it anymore, mm -hmm. and I will, I will let it go everything, and I will give it into your hands. Mm -hmm. And after that, I have already my peace of mind and it in my heart. So, thank you. Amen. Yes. Like like what uh, what what like what was shared to us uh, in in Psalm, and uh, we should not be afraid when once one becomes rich. It's not bad to become rich because, in fact, if you look at at, uh, at the life of Abraham, he was rich in, in, in cattle, in, 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 in property, he, he was rich, and yet his heart was not set on those riches. It's, it's, uh, some people have the mistaken notion that money is the root of evil. No, money is not the root, it's the love of money that is the root of all evil. Making money is not, good, it's not bad. When money becomes priority, when money becomes first in your life, then that will be a problem. That was the problem because I was put that in my head and I was claiming on it and it was mm. really, really bad. But I know that what is really bad, but I could help myself unless that I, I, I just let it go and Lord, you yep. are the one. Your, your, your will, I will, will be done. Mm. Mm. Because we we all need money. Who who does who here? Is there anyone here who does not need money? I'm raising my hands, not because I I, don't, I, I also need money. We, we we need money, but money should not be our our master. Like 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 one person said, money is money is a good servant, but it is a hard master. When money becomes your your master, then oh, it will you will be miserable. So money should serve you, and you should not serve money. Okay. And so, what about, like I said, what about properties? Properties can be all can also be things that we can cling to, especially when we put a lot of uh, investment already into that thing, right? Or how about, uh, of course, people? There, like I said, people. But when it comes to people. It's not only the people whom we love, but it's also the people whom we hate, we love to hate. Do you agree? There are people who we don't want to let go because they have offended us. We don't want to release them because we think that if we release them, and that is when you release them, you, 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 you release forgiveness. When we forgive them, it's like letting them go and, and uh, they can they, they get away with it. They're not punished. When we say, Lord, you should punish, look at what this person did to me. You should be aware that this person has hurt me so much. Right? And then you don't want to let it go. 
But the, the longer you hold on to this person, the more bitter you become. So if you don't want to release that person, do you think that person is do you think that person is bothered if you don't release him? Do you think that person is hurt more than you when you don't release that person? Who hurts the most when you don't forgive? Yourself. Yourself. Because you you become bitter. You don't get any sleep. You see the the even just the picture of that person, you lose your appetite. <laughs> right? You're, you're not happy, you become like a prune because you're all wrinkled from thinking about the, the pain that this person has caused you. And that person, he or she may have already forgotten what she, they did. And, you're, and he has already moved on, but you're still suffering. Because you don't want to let it go. Let it go. <laughs> no, because you want, still want to hold on. You cling. Yes. Not, only be, not, not because you love that person, but because you love to hate that person. So you have to release. You have to release forgiveness. Because once you forgive, the first person who benefits is not that person, it's you. You, you forgive for your sake. You forgive for your sake. And all, not only for your sake, but also because it's God's commandment. And God, like I said, in, in, uh, as, we explained, as we saw in Abraham's example, when God commanded, he obeyed immediately. He did not say, uh, Lord, let me hold on to my grudge for, for a few more months, and then by Christmas, I will release him. <laughs> no, when God commands you to forgive, you forgive. So let, let go of that person. Let go. Because once, when, you know, Jesus himself said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Yes. Stephen <laughs> said when he was being stoned, Lord, do not put this to their account. And that's what God is telling us. That's what Jesus is showing us an as an example. We should release forgiveness. The Bible says that by this shall all men know that you are my disciples when you love one, one another. another. And how is love expressed? By forgiving as well. We should forgive. Otherwise, if we are people who hold on to grudges, we will not be reflecting God. So what we cling to is usually what God asks you to release to Him. It may be a property, it may be a person whom you love, or it may be a person whom you hate. You have to release that person. It may be something, it may be that your job is taking too much of your time that you don't have time for God, and God is telling you, to give him priority. So what we cling to is usually what God asks you to release to release to him. Are we clear on that? Amen. No questions? Anyone wants to make any comment or wants to add something to that? Nothing? Going, going, gone. Or uh, let me just share something, Pastor. Yes. Um, <laughs> Rewind. Um, I, I think uh, we all have um, personal issues actually in, in our lives and I just want to share something I mean I, I think it applies to many of us um, also we, we cling to you know to fears you know worries mm. addictions and we don't even have time, as you said, we don't even have time to, uh, for God, you know, uh, when we are addicted with something, say for example, addicted with work, addicted with um, our vices, addicted with, um, you know, when we all have all wants and wishes and everything that it comes to, you know, when we have something to put on sale in the in the shops or you know we are sometimes leaning too much on our properties you know uh, acquiring more properties land everything and it becomes we, we become so attached with with so many things and and also you know we also cling to our we, we worry too much we have fears that you know, we sometimes do not know how to 
release it. You know, we don't, we don't really, I mean, we always pray, but we just utter it in our mouth, mm. but we don't actually practice it that God, you know, when we practice it with faith, I think um, that's what we cling to most mm. of the time. Mm -hmm. This morning as I was, uh, uh, Oh, and I would suggest that uh, you, you look at, um, if you have internet access, go to uh, BibleGateway.com and then uh, go to the daily reading. There will, there, there's a reading plan and, uh, that you can follow and you can choose whatever reading plan so that you can, st I think it's good for, for each of us or all of us to get into the habit of reading at least one or two chapters of the Bible a day. Mm -hmm. Old Testament, New Testament, uh, even if uh, just reading it, starting in the morning, you uh, the first thing you do in the morning, you read it. Yes. Even if uh, yes. even if the water, if the pot is already uh, boiling, uh, you, you just put it first in your life. You you put God first. Put the get into the habit of reading the Bible, and uh, I, I I assure you it will be a blessing. Uh, so anyway, this morning I, as I was reading. Uh, there was uh, one one passage that uh, one devotional that I read, and it talks about uh, this person uh, who was saying, "How about the talents that we have already given for for the army?" Because uh, he he paid a a, a huge amount. He was worried about the uh, sort of the investment that he made for the army that will protect Israel. And then the Lord was uh, impressing through a servant through the servant of God that they should trust in the Lord and not in those things. We worry uh, about a lot of things. Yes. How, when we invest, of course, we expect a return. But if the Lord, uh, in, in, the, in that message, uh, it's as the Lord is telling him, or in, in the devotional that I read, uh, it says that um, we worry about a lot of things. And there was one person who, who said that man is the only, I, I don't want to accept that, but there's a certain truth to it. He said that man is, is a worrying animal. It's, all, it's the only animal that worries. Have you seen a chimpanzee worrying about what he will eat tonight? No. Have you, have you seen a hippopotamus calculating uh, what uh, he will be get in, what his investment will, uh, will yield? No. Man is the only worrying animal, as they say, but I don't accept the, the fact that uh, the, the term, we're not animals. We're, we're creature, we are created in the image of God. But we worry. And the, word, and the Bible says, Paul said, do not worry about anything but in everything. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And that is a command. It's not a suggestion. He said, do not worry. Even Jesus himself said, do not worry about tomorrow. So, if Jesus, the word, if the word who, uh, who came, the, who, the word who became flesh is saying, do not worry about tomorrow, and that is a command. If we worry, then we are not obeying the command. The command is, do not worry. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of sin. And it's, it's a command. So, if you start worrying, you're not obeying. And if we don't obey, we are committing a sin. It's a sin. Yes. Worrying is a sin. Because the word of God says, Jesus said, do not worry. And if we start worrying, we are, we are telling God, Lord, I don't trust you. I don't trust that you can take care of this. And we heard earlier that Jehovah Jireh. And when, when we say Jehovah Jireh, it means literally means God will see to it. When, it, when we say it's an idiom, God, when, when uh, the idiom uh, to see to it means he will take care, it will be taken care of. So when you start worrying, you are telling, in fact, you are telling God, I, can, I cannot trust you that you will take care of my problem. But when you do not worry, you are, on the opposite, when you do not worry, you are in fact telling God, Lord, I trust you with this. Like I said, when we when we were told uh, when we were told that we were gonna we, we need to leave Reposa, we only have two weeks to leave Reposa, uh, and of course uh, 
my wife and Pastor John and Pastor Mark, we were the only four, we were the only ones who were aware. And then I said, why should we worry? It's, it's the Lord's problem. Of course, we do our part. We look. But it's, first and foremost, it's the Lord's problem. So he took care of it. Jehovah Jireh. Amen. Amen. So the fact that we are here, it's already a testimony that God has showed himself as our Jehovah Jireh. So do not worry. Amen. So do not worry. What we cling to is usually what God asks you to release to him. And then what you release, God often replaces with something even more valuable. And we will repeat that. When God asks you to release something, He replaces it with something or someone even more valuable. And when God replaces, He also rewards. There is a blessing on top of what you get back. There's a blessing. Yeah? It's like you invest, and not only do you get back what you invested, there's a, there's a, there's a profit. And God is also like that. Because... He's the one who, who, who's, who, who, Jesus gave those parables about, uh, about, in, uh, about uh, uh, when God giving and he, exp- the master, when he in, uh, in, entrusted the talents to his servants, he expected something in return. And if God teaches that principle, likewise, it's also applicable to us. When we, when we invest something, when we do something for God, we can expect to receive a benefit. So when you give up something because God told, tells you to give it up, don't look at it as giving it up to, to God or just something like that, but th- see it as an investment. You look at it as, Lord, if this is what you want, if, th- you think this is the, if you believe this is the best, if, uh, not only believe, you know this is the best, then I will do it. Give, I give it to you as an investment because you will, it will return, you will return it to me more than a hundredfold. And that also applies to the giving when we give, when uh, to the giving of uh, our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. We, we do, sometimes we don't want to release it because we think, oh, Lord, you know my needs, but God will provide. Amen. 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 My God shall provide yes. all my needs. Amen. And that's where we, the enemy always tells you, did God really say that you should give? <laughs> Maybe it's for the Old Testament, but. Maybe. No, but God commands. And when we obey, He will bless. Amen. All right. Uh, So that is just a recap of, this is just a recap of what we heard earlier. Now, to to go down further, let's look at these verses. And then I will, uh, uh, then we will be doing a sort of a little assignment with regards to that. Uh, So we start with, maybe someone can uh, look for Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5. Another one can look for Matthew chapter 6 verse 24. Another one can look for Matthew chapter 10 verse 37. And then another one, Mark chapter 10 verse 29 to 31. And then Romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 2, which is very familiar for many of us. And then Philippians chapter 3 verse 2 verses 3 to 11. This is quite long, so those who want to read aloud long can uh, use Philippians chapter 2. Verses 3 to 11. So let's start with Deuteronomy chapter 2, chapter 6, verse 5. Anyone who wants to read it? Me. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Okay. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Uh, and that's the command. It's a command. It's not a suggestion. Now, how do we do it? How do, how do we apply it? How do we love the Lord with, love, with all your heart? Love your neighbor. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the next one. Love, yeah. love your enemies. Love your enemies. Okay, so, but when it comes, that's the second. The, 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 the first and greatest command is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and your strength. But how do we do it? Obey. Obey. We obey. obey. And what do we obey? We give time to Him. We give time to Him. Yes, uh, give our tithes because of trust God. We give our tithes. We give a bit because in fact everything that we have comes from the Lord. Yeah, We obey His commands. We love the Lord by obeying His commands. And uh, the Word of God, Jesus Himself said, 
Take my yoke upon me. Uh, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So love the Lord your God. So that's something that we should. Uh, we will be uh, it's part of our assignment. Now, Matthew chapter six verse twenty four. No one can serve two masters. Mm -hmm. Either he will hate the one and love the other. Okay. Or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. God and mammon. How come it? How come God mammon means money? Mm -hmm. yes. Mammon is money. It's not uh, mammon the bread, huh? Bread. It's mammon is money. <laughs> now my question is, why are aren't you uh, aren't you curious why God Jesus did not say God and Satan, but he said God and money. He did not say you cannot serve two masters. Either you serve one or another. You cannot serve both God and Satan. No, he said God and money. Why? Ah, you're mistaken there. It's the love of money. It's just the same. <laughs> it's just the same. <laughs> why? Why? Why did God, why did Jesus said you cannot serve both God? Why did he put God money on an equal footing with God when it comes to our love? Because I think uh, for the 10%, for some other Christians, that mm -hmm. was used already for them. But in the Old Testament at Malachi, it was clear, clearly said that uh, we have to give our 10% to, mm -hmm. to the Lord. And mm -hmm. some other clinging on it, they could not let it go. <laughs> <laughs> I did, they just want to say, I surrender all, but I surrender half. <laughs> <laughs> Money. How come? Yeah? It's, it's, and, and Jesus placed money on a sort of a equal footing with God when it comes to uh, it's it's like money is fighting for our love mm -hmm. with God yes. yeah. and Jesus himself because G he knew he knew how how strong the pull of money is on our lives people would literally die for money yes. they will spend their strength in fact, Deuteronomy says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, with your strength. But a lot of people, they serve money with all their heart, soul, and strength. They give their strength for money. They give their, their heart for money. People even give their bodies up for money. So that's why Jesus said, you cannot love both God and money. And I'm sure, of course, many of us as for Filipinos, we are here because we, we want to earn, we need to earn money. But first and foremost, you should never forget that it is God who brought you here. And if you are, if, if God is blessing you, then remember to give back to God what He owes, what, what is due Him. Amen? So, God and money. It's not God and Satan. It's God and money. So you can see how God uh, takes seriously the threat of money, of the love of money on the life of a believer. Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. He who loves father or mother more than me mm -hmm. is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So does it mean that we should leave our families? No. no. But it means... Well, like, like in, uh, uh, with regards to this, our families should not take first place in our lives. It's God who takes first place, as we have seen in Abraham's life. But when, when, when Abraham gave God the priority, he did not lose his son. But he gained. Yeah, but he gained. And he gained even more. He gained even more blessings. Not only was the blessing promised to his son, but the generations to follow. And we are part of that generation. Amen. So, family. When, uh, and it's not only family, but also the people around us. It could be friends. It could be friends or lovers. Is <laughs> that true? Family, friends. Lovers. Lovers. Yeah. Son. 
There's a. Uh, uh, while I was going through um, through this daily Bible reading and, and, and I've been through some of the, the, the prophetic books, uh, one thing that I saw that was very common is that God has punished Israel several times because of idolatry. And we think of idolatry as having a, a graven image. But the definition of idolatry is an idol is something that comes between you and God. So it could be money, it could be a possession, it could be uh, a profession, or it, it could be a person. If that person is more important to you than God, then that person becomes an idol. So, and God hates idolatry. So, if that person comes between you and God, then that person becomes your idol. <coughs> so, who should be first in our lines? If, if that person comes between you, then you are committing idolatry, and God doesn't like that. He wants to be first. He wants to be number one in your life. Why? Not because he is selfish, although he says he's a jealous God, but because he knows, because it is for our good. It is for our good that God should be number one in our lives. Mark chapter 10, verse 29 to 31. Pastor, can you elaborate first of what is the reason why God is good? When God. Him because at least they know. Yeah, why, why, is, why is God good? Because, it's, because he is good. He is he is love. All blessings come from him. Every life comes from him, and and uh, because God is all knowing and uh, and he is uh, he is our provider, as we have been saying earlier, he is our, the great I am. He is he is able to meet our need, and he knows us. He knows us in and out. He knows when when we are sitting. He knows when we are standing. God knows you, and God knows what you need. So if and like uh, maybe as an example as parents we know we believe what uh, we know we believe that we know what is best for our children especially when they are small when when they take when when they want to do something that is dangerous or that will not be beneficial to them we will not allow them to have it but we will we only think of the best for them and on a greater on a greater level god all the more cares about us, and uh, and if if we don't put God first in our lives, it will he it will be sort of hindering him from blessing us even more. In fact, you can you can. And this is just me. But as we have uh, as as I have shared last Friday during the prayer meeting, it is faith that enables God to move. Without faith. It's not possible. But with faith, everything is possible. But for me, if, if I were to put it in, in, in this way, you can sort of bind. You can sort of chain God's hands from moving. Why? How? When you don't believe. When you, when you don't put God first in your life, you are limiting Him. You are sort of putting a, a handcuffs on Him. You are not allowing him to move. You are closing the door on him uh, if you don't put him first in your life. But when you put him first in your life, you release his hands and allow, and allow him to move and, and bless you. And I can assure you that you will, when, when you put God first, you will be blessed. I can assure you because I have experienced that. God will bless you more than you imagine when you put, put him first. For me, that's... My experience, yes. Yes. I can tell you, yes. I can say that. I am yes, <laughs> because especially when you love your family. Oh yes. In your family, your parents died, so you go to God. Yes, of course. Because if you love more your family than God, so you will be lost completely. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Because you know, when you put these people first, when you put people first in your lives, and when, when they go, either when, when, when the Lord takes them, 
you will be you will be lost you will feel lost because you've worked all your life for that person you dedicated all your efforts for that person but when their per person disappears from your life where will you go but God is always with us Amen. and he will never leave us Amen. and when he we put him first <laughs> He said, seek first the kingdom of God and all the things that we need. Uh, even our families, we will, we, He will give us contentment. We will be happy. And like I said earlier, uh, when we hold things or even people with an open hand, and when the Lord takes it, it will not be painful for us. That's why when Job said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away, he said that because God was first in his life. And God will also comfort us when the time to take, uh, when the time for taking comes. He will also comfort us, especially when we, when we put Him first in our lives. Mark chapter ten, verse twenty-nine to thirty-one, and we are almost there. <laughs> we will almost be finished. Um, maybe. Is it okay? Ten more minutes. Yeah. Okay, ten more minutes, and then I will give you an assignment. Mark chapter 10, verse 29 to 31. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or mm -hmm. brothers or sisters or father or mother mm -hmm. or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. Who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands? with the persecutions and the age to come, eternal life. Amen. Hundred percent. God will return it to us a hundred percent when we give it, when we give people properties, uh, the things that he asked for, when we give it to him for his sake and for the gospel's sake, he will return it to us a hundred percent. And like I said, it may not be the person that you are hoping for, but it will be someone even better. Or it will not just be one, but more people. So God is able to bless you. It will, it may not be in accordance with, like I said earlier, it may not be in accordance with our plan, but we know, and the word of God says, His plan is always better. Amen. Amen. So if you lose, if you give it up, or if you give him or her up, God will give you someone or something even better. And it says, 100% more. Not 100, 100 more wives, no. 100 more husbands, no. But more, more, more people in your life who will be a blessing to you. You will be abundantly blessed. That's what the word says. And God said that. Not I. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It's very familiar for many of for all of us. Mm -hmm. Offer your bodies. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. How can... So... Here we see that we should offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. So that means, uh, a living sacrifice means a sacrifice that is alive, not a dying sacrifice. So that means we should also take care of our bodies so that we can use it to serve. Some people, they start serving God when they are almost, they're already sick. And, uh, or they are already, they, like they live their lives for themselves and when they are already uh, sort of, uh, you know, they already have a king. That's when, oh, sorry, Brother Hermie, it's not the, but when, when they're already old, that's when they start thinking, I will serve God. No. The, the Word of God says in Ecclesiastes, uh, remember your Creator in the days of your youth. The Lord has given you talents. The Lord has given you abilities. Use it for Him. Use it. And He will use you mightily as a living sacrifice. And be not conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we are transformed when our mind is renewed and our mind is renewed when we allow the Word of God to shine upon our hearts. When we read the Word of God, it transforms us. As we read the Word of God, we 
We ask the Holy Spirit to guide us, to teach us, and then we should apply. I, I, like I told you, it's important, it's good, it's beneficial to read the uh, 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 one or two chapters of the Bible a day. But not only to read and just to increase in knowledge, but we should apply. We should apply. Uh, James said, uh, be doers of the word and not only hearers. We should be doers of the word. Amen. And finally, the long one, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 to 11. Maybe uh, someone can read the first uh, four verses or the first three verses and then the rest. And then the others can read the next three verses. And then, okay, let's start. Who, who wants to read first? Philippians chapter 2. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let's, let each esteem others better than himself. Mm -hmm. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, mm -hmm. but also for the interest of others. Amen. For the interest of others, not only for himself. Okay. Verses 5 to 8. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus who being in very nature, God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Mm -hmm. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. <clears throat> and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Yeah. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place. And gave him the name that is above every name. Mm -hmm. That at, this, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So, what we can see here is that when you humble, and as Jesus did, he humbled himself and God highly exalted him. The word, uh, I am reminded of that verse which says, Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and He will exalt you in due time. We are not to exalt ourselves, but it, is, it, is, it would be good if it is God who exalts us instead of ourselves. No? But when you humble yourselves, it is, and God, it is God who will, you will be exalted. You will be exalted by God. In the same way as Jesus did, when he was uh, when he humbled himself, he was given the name above all name. And as we have learned from from Abraham's life, when he humbled himself, when he offered up Isaac, he received such a wonderful promise that the generations his seed and many will be blessed. Would you like that? That your 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 grandchildren the children of your grandchildren, the grandchildren of your grandchildren, the generations to follow, if the Lord carries, the generations to, be, to follow will be blessed because you obeyed. Abraham's seed was blessed because he obeyed. Abraham received a wonderful promise God, because God says, because you obeyed. And if we want to be blessed, if we want to experience blessing in our lives, in our lives today, if we want our children to experience blessing and our grandchildren, the generations to follow, if you want to leave a legacy, if you want to leave a, a, a legacy that people, that your grandchildren will not be ashamed of, then start obeying. Start obeying. All right. The assignment. <laughs> Have you written down the, the verses? Okay, so this week you can reflect on the verses and then write a statement. After reflecting on the verses, of course you read it. Read it, read it, even if you need to. And then while reading it, ask the Holy Spirit to... Reveal to you, Lord, is there anything in my life that needs to be dealt with with regards to these verses that you have told me? Because I believe, I believe in, 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 in the word. I believe the power, the power of the word. 
I believe when, you, when we start reading this, God will speak to us. God will speak to you. So tell, ask God, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, and He will show you what are the things that you need to release to Him. He will show you uh, if, if God is number one in your life. And He will assure you that if you give it up, you will get more. He will assure you that if you humble yourself, you will be blessed. So, the, the assignment is write a statement that summarizes the scriptures and, uh, and uh, about what God expects from you and what rewards He promises to those who obey. So, in short, it's, it's not just a summary, but what are these verses, what do these verses mean to you? To you personally? What, what is God telling you to do and what is God telling you personally using through this uh through these verses all of the, the yes, yes. All, of the, even one. all of the verses huh? all of the not verses? just one all the verses all the verses because say... there's a common I believe there's a common theme yes. there's a common theme mm -hmm. well you, you can say you can say maybe don't don't just say it with five with five words but you can make a statement, even a sentence, like, God is telling me that, 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 that. God has revealed to me that I must, that, 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 that. Yeah. Something like that. You can write it in Tagalog, you can write it in English, you can write it in Punjabi, <laughs> you can write it in French. But in your own words, what is God telling you? Yes. Amen? Amen. And... <coughs> And next week we can we will yes. get together again. And then uh, if you want to share, and I believe that uh, God will speak to you this week. To this Amen. 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 All right. Can I just share something? Yes. Because I think this is also become a blessing to others. What God uh, give us all those those uh, those, uh, those all those blessings. How uh, how He blesses us. Yes, because uh, this coming Tuesday, <coughs> my boat will start to float. So your what? Your yes, boat? my boat. Like ah, your boat uh, in the Philippines. Yes. 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 So yeah. this coming uh, Tuesday. So uh, all we need just the, the the franchise of it, but because we cannot we cannot how to do it. Yeah, yeah. If there is no franchise of it. Uh -huh. But I do believe that God will provide those franchises. Amen. F financially we have, but the problem is the franchi franchise itself. If we are praying for somebody who will sell their franchise mm. to us so that we can start the business. And, the Lord will pray. and praise God, uh, maybe next year I can start the second and it, 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 it's more bigger. Because now it's only 20 sitters, but... Mm -hmm. I really believe God will give us another one, and it was 80 sitters. Mm. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So the Lord, the Lord blesses. The Lord blesses, and the Lord is not only uh, the Lord has reserved His blessing not only for some, but for you. God has a blessing for you, and so uh, write down these uh, verses, study them. And come up and then write down a statement and then next Sunday we will get together again. Amen? Okay, so shall we all stand up?